We're going to take a look at passive interface and see first off what the heck a passive interface is, how it impacts our network, and how it can make life a little easier on one of our routers here in particular. Because as you can see, I've kept the addressing the same from the previous labs, but over on router 2, I took the loopbacks down that we were using previously, and I brought up our two fast Ethernet interfaces that we have on that router and assigned those IP addresses that were on the loopbacks over to the fast Ethernet interfaces. So operationally and pingability-wise, we hope nothing has changed. All the other commands have remained the same. Version 2, no auto, and the appropriate network commands on each one of the routers. And here you can see, just to make sure, I sent some pings from router 1 over to 2111 and 2211, and we're in great shape there. We're always looking to improve things a little bit, though, and we got to watch that with a distance vector protocol, because as I've mentioned a couple of times, and you're going to hear it one more time, not only does RIP send a full routing update every single time it's time to send one, but it sends one pretty darn often. Remember the command that shows us how often that is? Show IP protocols. There is a ton of great information here. And as you can see, here are the timers. And by default, RIP is sending an update every 30 seconds. So we're going to live with that for right now over on router 1. But router 2 is a different animal. Because right now, router 2, I've connected router 2 to a couple of switches. And in turn, those switches are connected only to hosts. So there are absolutely no devices off of Fast Ethernet 00, 00 or Fast Ethernet 01 that need those RIP updates. Therefore, it's silly for us to send them because everything we do has a cost. Router 2's got to package those updates. Router 2's got to send them out the interface. That takes up a little bit of bandwidth. And it's just uh, not something we need. The problem is, though, is that those updates are enabled by the network 20.0.0.0 command. And if we take that off a of Router 2, Router 1 would no longer see these particular networks. Hmm, so we, it's not so easy as just taking the network command off. This is where the passive interface command really comes into play and really is quite helpful because what the passive interface command is going to allow us to do is prevent sending the routing updates out the interfaces that we deem passive, but at the same time, the network command can still advertise them. So we're going to see that in action right now because we're going to go over to router 2. And let's run show IP protocols here. Much the same kind of information. And we see a couple of three interfaces now. We see that they're hard coded to send and receive version 2. We see that AutoSum is uh, turned off. Do you see anything there about passive interfaces at all? I don't either. Let's hope that changes because we're going to verify our passive interfaces with this command when we're done. And oddly enough, passive interfaces is not configured on the interface you're going to make passive. It's actually going to be configured under the routing protocol, which in this case is RIP. And let's run iOS help here. And you can see down near the bottom, passive interface, suppress routing updates on an interface. That's exactly what we want to do. And I'm going to blow your mind here in just a second when I run iOS help again and you see the many, many, many types of interfaces we can have. Don't worry, you're certainly not going to see all these on the CSENT or CCNA exams. And uh, frankly, there are a couple here I still haven't worked with, and I've worked with a lot of interface types. So it's just giving you the full list here of possibilities on this router. It does not mean that you have some of these running on the router. You know, like C-Tunnel or Dialer Interface, we don't have any of those. It's just going to give you the full list of possibilities. Also notice at the very bottom, or next to the bottom, Default, suppress routing updates on all interfaces. If I wanted to, I could use that option to make every interface on the router passive. And that's something you might not want to do because, of course, in this case on router 2, the routing updates would no longer go up to router 1, and you know we go downhill from there. So you want to be selective about that. And let's see. Let's go ahead and just put fast 01 here. Before we do that, though, there was something else I wanted to show you. And that's with a debug, because we know theoretically those packets are going out, the, the fast Ethernet interfaces, but we want to see them. And let's go ahead and run a debug IP rep, and then our new best friend, clear IP route asterisk, cover your eyes, here comes the scrolling. But it will calm down here pretty quickly. And I'm just going to stop it pretty close to right there. I'm going to let it run here for a second. Okay. 
that's long enough. <laughs> I think we've got enough to work with here. And the first clue that you can see that Fast Ethernet 00 and 01 are indeed sending updates is when I cleared the routing table of dynamically learned routes, RIP immediately is sending requests and look where the requests are going. You know, they sent a couple of requests out the serial interface, but it also sent a couple of requests out both of the Fast Ethernet interfaces. Now, this is interesting too, and you'll see this in RIP or debug IP RIP. Uh, we're actually kind of officially getting a packet from each one of those IP addresses. You know, notice it says ignored it because it was sourced from one of our router's local addresses. We'd like to get rid of that too. Passive interface will help us out with that. But you can also see where we're receiving the updates on the serial interfaces. And let's see, there's fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Here's an update we're sending out 2111. It even tells you what the IP address of the interface is at the very end. We know this is 224.009, and that we know that's version 2 because version 2 multicast were version 1 broadcast, just a friendly reminder. And with Fast Ethernet 01.2211. So we are definitely sending out updates of those at those Fast Ethernet interfaces. We're going to turn that off and then test connectivity and make sure router 1 can still get to those two networks. So now let's go back to router rip, and we'll do a passive interface, Fast 00. zero up arrow backspace one done so we just made those interfaces passive that's all there is to it so how are we going to verify that you already know one way and actually you know both ways let's run show IP protocols first and now notice we have passive interface information so when you don't have any interfaces that are passive on the router show IP protocols isn't going to show you anything it's not even going to have a blank field in there but once you make some interfaces passive it will indeed show here. We're also going to verify it with our debug. And we'll clear that routing table again. You never get tired of clearing that routing table with RIP. Might as well not because you're going to be doing it for a long time. I'm going to let that run and see if some more updates come in. But notice first off here at the top, once we cleared it, notice we sent two requests at serial 1010 but no requests went out the fast Ethernet interfaces. And you'll also notice everything else we have here, we've received version 2 updates on the serial interface, but we haven't seen anything from or sending out via the fast Ethernet interfaces. And you can see now that continues. We waited about half a minute. You can see sending v2 update to 224.009 via serial 10, but we have successfully prevented any routing updates or requests going out the fast Ethernet interfaces. And the great thing is if something changes, if someone added a router off fast Ethernet 00 or that was changed from a layer 2 switch to a layer 3 switch and it needed the RIP updates, it's simple enough to take care of. You just go in to router RIP. I'll show you exactly how to do that. Because with most Cisco commands, not quite all, but most of them, you can negate them by putting the word no in front of it. Let me introduce you to one keystroke. I'm not real big on keystroke shortcuts. But one I do like, if you do the up arrow and then the down arrow, that's going to go through the history of your commands. And let's say that I wanted to put just no in front of this. If you hit control A, watch the cursor. It goes to the front. I do find that one to be pretty handy. And then I would just type the word no in front of it, and there you go. And you could verify that again with show IP protocols. And you'll see now that we only have 00, zero as passive. And if we do a quick debug, and you'll see the requests there now near the top. I promise I'll go back. Um, if you see, you'll see right there sending request on fast, fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. So we have successfully made that interface non passive. Let's go ahead and make it passive again, and then we'll go up to router 1 and check things out. And that's all there is to it. And I'm going to clear the routing table here. Let's do a quick U all there to help router one out. And then we'll go up to router one to a quick show IP route rip. And there are the four subnets still, but let's make sure we can ping them. And we can. 
And that's it. So fantastic. Passive Interface did exactly what we wanted to do. We're still advertising the route successfully, but we are suppressing routing updates from going out a couple of interfaces that, frankly, they don't need to go out. Now, again, let me just remind you of this. It's a, it's a handy little thing to know. Because let's say that you had 10 interfaces on this particular router. Loopbacks, fast ethernet, gig ethernet, serial, and the only interface that you wanted to send routing updates out was the serial interface. You wanted to suppress them on all the others. Now you could put in nine separate uh, passive interface entries, but you could also do this. You could do the passive interface default thing and then do a no passive interface for the one or two interfaces you didn't want to be passive. So that's another approach. And you know, with two interfaces entering two separate lines, no big deal. But again, let's say you were on a router that had 10 interfaces, 15 interfaces, had a ton of loopbacks. You don't want to sit there and say passive interface, loopback one, passive interface, loopback two. Just make them all passive with, default, with the passive interface default command and then enter a no command, no passive interface for the interfaces that you don't want to be passive. Whew. That's a lot easier to do than to say. It's pretty long-winded when you explain it. When you do it, there's nothing to it. So that is it for passive interface. Coming up next, we're going to go back and take a look at those administrative distances that I hinted about a couple of times and take a look at the routing table a little more closely here with RIP. And that is coming up next.